So today we are going to discuss the SA node or sinoatrial node. We have already discussed that the heartbeat normally is due to the SA node, the activity of the SA node or the sinoatrial node. The sinoatrial node or SA node is basically the pacemaker of the heart. The normal heart rate, the normal heart rhythm is due to the activity of the sinoatrial node. So today we are going to discuss a few important points about the sinoatrial node, sinoatrial node, and we will discuss the mechanism of its self excitation, how the sinoatrial node is controlling the normal rhythm rate of the heart. Although there are a lot of excitatory fibers in the heart, but um, this is the SA node, which is normally acting as the pacemaker and which is normally regulating the heart rate. So to go into detail, uh, the most important thing about the SA node is that it is located in the superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium. It is su located superiorly in the posterior and lateral part of the right atrium. We have discussed again and again that the heart has two atria and two ventricle, right atrium or left atrium, right ventricle and left uh, ventricle. Right and left atria basically pump the blood into the ventricle and then the right ventricle pump the blood into the lungs and the left ventricle pumps the blood into the uh, whole body and the heart cycle or the cardiac cycle continues. But how the heart is pumping, how the heart is pumping regularly, how the rate of the heart is defined, what will be the rate of the heart in different cir circumstances, that is normally dependent on the SA node. Although the AV node or other fibers can also control the rate of the heart in some circumstances, but normally in the normal human being, the SA node is controlling the rate of the human heart. So how it is doing it? Basically the fiber of the SA node has no contractile muscle no contractile muscle filaments but has the capability of self excitation this muscle the muscles the fibers of the sa node which is located in the superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium just at the level of opening of the superior vena cava the point where the superior vena cava or the vein which brings the blood from the head at that location it is uh, present it has no contractile filaments like the SA node is not contributing toward the heart motility but it is contributing towards the self excitation process. The heart muscles are contractile, they can contract, they can contract so that they can pump the blood but the fibers of the SA node they cannot contract but they have the property of self excitation. So, what basically is the mechanism of self excitation or what basically is the mechanism of a regular spark or regular electric current that is generated from the SA node. So the first point about the self uh, mechanism of self excitation is that the resting membrane potential RPM of the SA node is from minus 55 to minus 60 as compared to minus 85 to minus 90 millivolt. The resting membrane potential of the ventricles or the ventricular muscle is normally between minus 85 to minus 90. But the resting membrane potential of the SA node is a bit more positive. It is a bit more positive as compared to the resting membrane potential of the ventricular muscle, which is more negative. It is less negative or more positive and it's between minus 55 and minus 65, minus 60. The other thing is that the cell membrane of the fibers of the SA node is leaky to the sodium and calcium ions. So the first point is that the resting membrane potential of the SA node is a bit more positive or it's less negative as compared to the ventricular muscle. And the second thing is that it is a bit more leaky. The sodium and calcium ions can go through the membrane, the cell membrane of the different cells of the sinoatrial node. This is now one cell, this is one cell which has been taken from the whole sinoatrial node and it shows that it has some leaky channel for the sodium and calcium ions. Normally the rhythmicity of any muscle, especially the ventricular muscle is due to three types of channel. First of all we have the First of all, we have the sodium, the fast, the fast sodium channel. The second type of uh, 
The second type of channels are slow, slow sodium calcium channels and the third type of channels are the potassium channels. Normally in the ventricular muscles we have fast sodium, slow sodium and calcium channel and the calcium channel, potassium channel. We have three types of channels which contribute towards the action potential of the ventricular muscle. But in case of the sign, but in case of the S anode, the fast sodium channels are closed due to less negative RPM. We discussed that the resting membrane potential of the S anode is minus 55 as compared to minus 85. It is less negative. Due to less negativity or positivity, the fast sodium channels of the S anode are closed. What happens in the normal, vent uh, normal ventricular muscle is that due to the entry of fast sodium channels, a spike occurs, action potential occurs. Then due to entry of slow sodium and slow calcium channels, plateau occurs. Sustained contraction occurs. The contraction lasts for a bit longer time. And then due to exit of potassium ions, depolarization occurs. So normally, due to entry of fast sodium, depolarization occurs. Due to entry of potassium, a slow sodium and slow calcium, plateau occurs. And then due to the exit of potassium from the cell, the repolarization occurs. This is normal phenomena in the ventricular muscle. But in the S anode, the cells of the S anode, the fast sodium component, the fast sodium channels are closed due to the positive RPM. Due to positive RPM, the sodium, the fast sodium channels are closed. But the second point was the fiber cells. The fiber cells are a bit leaky to the sodium and calcium channels. So slow calcium channels are open leading to slow atrial nodal action potential. There the fast channels are closed but there is slow entry of sodium and calcium which leads towards slow movement of the slow movement of the action potential or slow movement of the RPM towards the positive side from the minus 55 from the minus 55 towards the minus 40. There is slow movement, there is slow movement and you can see that the movement of this depolarization is slowly, slowly, slowly moving towards the 40. If you compare it with the green color that is for ventricular, this movement is a bit rapid. This is a bit rapid. This is due to the movement of sodium through the fast sodium channel. But in the S anode, the fast sodium channels are closed. So there is a slow movement of sodium and calcium ions through the slow sodium calcium channels and the slow depolarization is occur due to the leaking of sodium and calcium into the cells of the S anode. This is one cell of the S anode. When enough sodium and calcium has leaked in, it takes positivity, more positivity inside the cell. So the RPM reaches from minus 55 towards minus 40. It becomes more negative it becomes more negative then self excitation is due to the leak of sodium inside the cell which causes slow rise in rpm towards minus 40 millivolt when potential reaches threshold of minus 40 slow sodium and calcium channels get activated causing the action potential initially the, this membrane was leaky to the sodium and calcium channel and due to the leak channel the slow sodium and calcium was entering through the membrane through the leakiness of the membrane and this through the, this leakiness of the membrane the potential moved from minus 55 towards minus 40 but when the level of minus 40 is achieved this is the threshold at this threshold level the second type of channel which we discussed the slow sodium and calcium channel those channels get activated when they get activated they get opened as soon as the slow sodium calcium channel get opened a lot of sodium and calcium rush in and there is a rapid spike in the action potential and the depolarization occur then as soon as the sodium calcium channel enter and depolarization occur 
there is a movement of R RPM from minus 40 towards that plus 20 or plus 30 or whatever it may be but depolarization occurs and the RPM moves from the negative zone towards positive zone but as soon as the depolarization has occurred the sodium calcium channels close the sodium calcium channel closed and potassium channels open so as soon as the sodium calcium channels close the potassium channels open and then potassium moves out of the cell so the positive ions they start moving out of the cell when the positive ions move out out of the cell then the rpm starts moving again coming down again it starts coming down again and when it has crossed the threshold of minus 40 and it has reached minus 60 or minus 55 then hyperpolarization occurs so when the hyperpolarization occurs the rpm has reached again at the level of minus 55 and minus 60 then again the leakiness uh, the, the leakiness of the sodium calcium starts sodium calcium start moving inside again and then the potassium channels start closing again then again leakiness occur then the membrane depolarization starts it moves toward the uh, minus 40 level when the minus 40 level is achieved again the sodium calcium slow sodium calcium channels open then there is rush of sodium calcium into the cell then depolarization occur as soon as depolarization occur slow sodium calcium channel close again and potassium channels open again then potassium moves out then repolarization or hyperpolarization occur hyperpolarization is basically movement towards more negative side when it moves again towards more negative side then again then there is slow closure of the potassium ions then there is again opening of the uh, sodium and calcium channels slow leakiness of the sodium calcium channel starts again it starts moving the potential again towards the minus 40 zone threshold is achieved again sodium slow sodium calcium channel open again there is depolarization again there is movement movement of the potassium out of the cell and then the hyperpolarization repolarization occur, occurs again and this process is repeated again and again throughout a person's life so that's how the process of uh, depolarization repolarization hyperpolarization occurs and that's how the self excitation process of the sinus node is achieved due to this re but but due to this uh, sinoatrial activity this discharge spreads to the atrial muscle when it spreads to atrial muscles the atrial muscles contract when the atrial muscles contract it pumps the blood into the ventricle then after some delay this charge has reached the av node where it gets delayed and after the delay it spreads to the ventricle then the ventricles get excited and the ventricles contract and the blood moves out of the pump uh, the ventricles and the cardiac cycle continues then again the sinus node activity starts a discharge occur which through this cycle and the atria it spreads to the atria atria contracts again then blood moves to the ventricle then the ventricles contract and then the uh, blood moves out of the ventricle so that's how the sa node the sinoatrial node it acts as the pacemaker of the heart and the mechanism is uh, to summarize it uh, basically the sinoatrial node it is located in the superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium its fiber has no contractile muscle but has the capability of self excitation it is uh, exciting again and again it is self excitable and the mechanism of its self excitation is that its normal rpm is less negative it is minus 55 to minus 60 as compared to the rpm of a ventricle a ventricular muscle which is minus 85 to minus 90 then the cell membrane of the fibers is leaky to the sodium calcium channel then the normal rhythmicity is because of the normal closure of the fast sodium the fast sodium channels are closed because of less negative rpm 
but the slow sodium calcium channel and the potassium channel contribute so because of the slow calcium channels the movement of depolarization is a bit slow it moves towards its threshold a bit slowly as compared to the rapid movement of the ventricular muscle uh, because the so fast sodium channels are open there so the depolarization occurs a bit uh, rapidly due to leakiness the slow channels are open leading to slow atrial nodal action potential this slow excitation is due to the leak of sodium inside the cell inside the cell which causes slow rise in rpm towards minus 40 so there is slight slow movement towards the threshold of minus 40 when the potential reach threshold of minus 40 slow sodium calcium channels get activated and cause the action potential when the minus 40 rpm is reached the slow sodium calcium channels one is the sodium calcium leakiness the other is slow sodium calcium channel the slow sodium calcium channel get activated at the threshold of minus 40 once they get open a lot of sodium calcium moves in and depolarization occur once depolarization occur then sodium calcium channels close and potassium channel open then there is no movement of sodium calcium inside rather there is movement of the positive ion or potassium ions outside the cell which leads to repolarization and hyperpolarization of the sinoatrial node muscle uh, cells or fibers and that's how it contributes towards the self excitation process of the sa node and that's how it acts as a pacemaker in the rhythm maker of the heart hope you have understood this uh, simple lecture thanks a lot for watching the video